Good night. It's Friday, the 22nd of January 2021, and I'm coming to you live to report on proceedings in the four courts today. And I am joined by Colm Granahan from the Anti-Corruption Task Force, um, who was uh, imprisoned before Christmas in connection with the Strokestown eviction and um, also uh, by Donal Hanley. And Donal Hanley um, was spokesperson for uh, the group Free the Strokestown 3, and he is the spokesperson for the McGann family who were evicted in Strokestown. Um, so before we begin, um, could you please go to the Irish Inquiry website? There's um, a box there, help us, a drop down box. And if you click on that, um, you can enter details of how you can help us with your technical skills. Um, or alternatively, if you want to make a small donation that uh, will contribute towards the upkeep of the Irish Inquiry platform. But we don't have any sponsorship or any, we don't sell any advertisements. So, for those of you who are joining us for the first time and you're not familiar with what happened in uh, Strokestown, very briefly, in uh, December 2018, um, agents acting on behalf of KBC Bank um, removed uh, or evicted the McGann family from their home, Anthony McGann, his sister Geraldine and his brother David. Um, a week later, the McGann family managed to move back into their home and they remained there until um, October of 2020. Um, so just, I suppose, uh, to really fast forward then to November 2020, on the 27th of November, Anthony McGann and retired Garda Kevin Taylor were arrested. Um, and they were brought to Dublin to the four courts. They were charged with contempt of court. Uh, they refused to purge the contempt of court and they were sent to Mount Joy prison. Two days later, on Friday, the 29th of November, Colin mm. Granahan was arrested at his home outside of Ballina in County Mayo. He too was taken uh, to Dublin to the four courts and um, he refused to purge his contempt of court and um, he too was uh, sent to Mountjoy Prison. On the 23rd of December, Colm uh, purged his contempt of court and he was released from Mountjoy. And uh, I'll be chatting to Colm in a little while about that. Um, so this morning at 11.30 in courtroom number 15, there was a, a virtual hearing um, the case uh, uh, of uh, Anthony McGann and retired guard Kevin Taylor came before uh, Judge Leone Reynolds. Now, as I say, it was a remote hearing. Uh, uh, Judge Reynolds and uh, Rossa Fanning for KBC Bank uh, uh, appeared remotely. Uh, just present in the actual courtroom was the court register, an usher, and two journalists, and um, another individual that I, I, I don't know who that individual was. Um, so, uh, Rossa Fanning then outlined to, um, to Judge Reynolds that um, um, uh, Kevin Taylor and Anthony McGann were um, in isolation because of, all, of COVID. It wasn't, or it hadn't been possible to get medical certification in time to facilitate a virtual link between the prison and the court, and therefore they wouldn't be appearing. He said that uh, he had received no documentation from Kevin Taylor, but that uh, he had uh, received documentation from Anthony McGann, in which Anthony was uh, questioning his ongoing detention. He also mentioned that uh, Colm Granahan uh, had purged his contempt of court on the 23rd and that he had been released from prison. Uh, that case was heard by a different judge and Rossa Fanning uh, was not present for that hearing. Um, at, um, at one stage, um, Judge Reynolds um, suspended the hearing 
she had become aware that there were people in the court, um, uh, myself and the other journalist, and um, she said that this was in breach of um, rules that had been set out by the president of the High Court, and she asked us to leave. We presented our NUJ cards, and um, the um, I suppose then um, she backed away from uh, her um, warning that she was going to call security to have us removed if we didn't leave. Um, instead, she um, advised that um, if we um, wanted to be party to hearings again as journalists, that we would have to advise the court service and uh, arrange for uh, to um, be present virtually. So that is um, more or less um, what took place today. Um, and um, I suppose now um, I will go to Colm Granahan. Um, Colm, <clears throat> you're um, very welcome. Um, and um, it's great to see you again. I, I know I spoke to you on the phone, but this is actually my first time to see you since uh, that day on the um, the 29th of November. Um, I, I was present in the court that day um, after you had been arrested and brought to Dublin and, um, and, and you went to prison. So it's great to see you again, Colm. Yeah, it's great to be on your show, Anna, and to get the opportunity to, to be able to, to talk to you and explain my perspective on the, the situation the ways it is. Yes. Um, Colm, so um, maybe you might tell us a little bit about your time in prison. I know that uh, one of the last things that you said, in fact, it might have been the last thing that you said to Judge Reynolds be, uh, before you headed off to prison. You asked if um, she could arrange for you to um, see the the All-Ireland because Mayor were playing in the All-Ireland um, on the Sunday week after that. And um, you, you, you know, this was pretty historic. And and and, and um, she advised you that she she didn't have the power to arrange that. That you'd have to speak to the prison service. So, uh, I, you know, perhaps you might tell us: Did you in fact get to see um, Mayo play Dublin that Sunday in the All Ireland? Oh, I did, but it was the Tipperary match that was on after I went in. The the Mayo Tipperary match was the first one. I got to see both of them in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the first one was all right, but the second one was kind of went as expected. It was, you know, the bridesmaids mm -hmm. again on that situation. But uh, mm -hmm. that's this this stuff that's going on now has taken me away. I didn't miss a football match either in the league or the championship that me always for years. But since okay. this came up, I have hardly been at any football at all. OK, Colm, um, if you don't mind me saying so, you're kind of gone off screen a little bit. If you kind of um, move to your left a little bit, you'll come back into the centre of the screen. That's much better. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a lot better. Maybe a little bit more left. Yeah. Yes, that's that's a lot better. Thank you. OK, so. Um, OK, Colm, so when you were in prison, you went into solitary confinement. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it was, um, we were inside, it was really about 23 hours and 40 minutes lockdown. Um, yes. We got out for a walk around the air for between 10 and 20 minutes a day. And um, that's just 15 days I was in that. So, um, you know, it, it was getting getting your head around, around it when you went in after your walk knowing that that's it for another 24 hours. But um, it was just to change the thought and to get into something positive and what I was there for, what I was trying to achieve. And, uh, you know, it sat, it sat well with me. I was OK. OK, so maybe you might tell us why you felt you were there and what it was that you were trying to achieve. Well, the only thing I have ever tried to achieve in me years going in and out of courts is just a level playing field. Fair for for me and if I'm in a prosecuting situation and fair for the defendant. And when I'm the defendant, I'd like it to be the same way, that I'd be 
treated fair, with respect, and given the access to the court and to the justice that I think everyone in this country deserves on an equal footing. Okay, so can you tell me then the reason why you decided to purge your contempt of court and uh, you were then set free after that? Yeah, well, my opinion, and this is, I'm speaking for myself here, that what goes on in the courts, it's, it's a game. And um, the, the game for me was to wait until I got my name attached to that case number. And as soon as I got that, as soon as I was a party to the case, then I knew that I could come out and do the paperwork. Because if I come out and ask for that paperwork, there is no hope I'd get it. From past experience, I know this. So I had to be on paper, court paper saying I was attached and committed. And it was even in the newspapers. So with that, I have all the evidence and the affidavits. And um, just on your introduction there, you said about me trying to lodge paperwork. Well, the register had to look at what was in the paperwork and she knows what's in it. And today, before the court case, Leonie Rinnes knew what was in it. And they don't want to accept it. Because okay, it no, you, you can't, you, sorry, can I, can I disrupt you there, uh, Colin? You don't know uh, what George Reynolds knows, so we cannot presume what George Reynolds knows. So we're 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 straying <coughs> into 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 into. Um, how will I put it? We cannot presume that the register or that uh, the judge knows what's in that paperwork. All we do know is that you tried to to lodge and submit that paperwork, and it was actually mentioned by George Reynolds today that your name is not attached to the case, and that was the reason why earlier this week you failed in your attempts to lodge that paperwork? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, for to me, it's just um, playing with words again, because even the newspapers will tell you I was attached and committed. So whatever they say in court, you see, the, the ways that they play this game is others. Now, I was named on the summons. Kevin Taylor was named on the summons and Anthony McGann was named on the summons. So that's the case that I was unlawfully jailed on. And well, I have you... no recourse to bring a challenge to that. That's basically what they're telling me. OK, so so OK, so let's get this clear. You believe you believe that you were unlawfully jailed and you believe that you um should have the right to be able to make that case before a court. But because they are not accepting the paperwork that you have lodged, uh, you are unable to do so. So um, now, uh, without, you know, we have to be very, very, very careful here, Colin, that we're not in contempt of court. Um, so would you say that, that's, that that is, a um, you know, a general assessment of the situation? Well, I'd say that it it, it is. But yes. Uh, okay. And so we we'll we 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 we'll, 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 we'll just have to leave it now. Sorry, Colm. Um, and I I do apologise. So we will have to leave it at that, um, because um, um, I you know we just have to be so so incredibly careful here. Um, well, it's in the public newspapers. Anyways, what I was going to say that I was yes. attached and committed. So okay. what they're saying now is that they're changing the goalpost again, saying I wasn't named on the original case. Okay. Of course I wasn't named on the original case because, you know, that's in, well, um, we say it's in limbo land anyways. But the fact of the matter is that I need to be entitled as one of the citizens of this country to be able to rectify and to clear my name and I have the proofs. They know I have the proofs. The, uh, well, we don't. We don't know that they no, know. 
Colin, well, I, so I we do can because the court register read the documents that I had for submitting, so she knows, and she's an officer of the court. And okay, it's Co their Colin, duty. Co yeah. Colin. Okay, so we'll we'll have to leave it at that, okay. um, because we, we, you know um, we. we uh, we we have to say here that we do not we cannot presume mm. we can mm. um, we cannot presume that um, that we know what any of the officers of the court or indeed George, Judge Reynolds knows uh, they, they they actually believe that they are upholding the law so we have to be we have to be um, extremely careful here um, and, and, and please do. Um, Accept my apologies for that, yeah. uh, because yeah, well, um, I, we, we don't, we don't, and to we don't want to apologize to you on no. this, is that what she done was she read the document and she okay. says, this is okay. not Colin, 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 can we just leave it now? Because um, it's an area that I don't want to stray into. Is, okay. is that OK? So I suppose, Colin, um, I, I'm, my deep, deep sympathies to you, because um, I I believe that you are in a situation where you believe that uh, you have um, a right um, to challenge uh, why you were imprisoned and uh, you feel that you're not able to lodge the papers uh, that, um, that, that you want to lodge in order to make that case and to have it go before a court. So, um, and, and that's where it is. So, Colm, I'm going to come back to you um, in a little while. I'm going to go now to... Um, to Donald Hanley. Donald, um, I was in a lot of, uh, or in very regular contact with you before uh, before Christmas. And um, so I haven't actually been talking to you at all until today. Um, so you are in uh, almost daily contact, you tell me, with uh, Anthony McGann, and you're in contact with Geraldine and David McGann. So first of all, can you uh, tell me, please, um, how are um, how are the two men in prison? Um, uh, hi, Anna. Thanks for for having me on this evening. I, yeah, I was talking to Anthony this evening. <clears throat> um, Ant Anthony is extremely angry, uh, you know, over everything that happened today. Um, and Colin was saying there how 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 that he wasn't named in the original. Uh, order which is, is true he wasn't named in it but uh, without a doubt Anthony was named in that original order and yet they wouldn't give him a chance to talk today um well now um, it was said in court that uh, the two well, men can were, I just say it, it, it was it was said in court and I know this for a fact uh that uh, they were in isolation and they were in in lockdown uh they had been for 10 or 12 days up until Wednesday uh, but I got a phone call from Anthony on Wednesday and I got a phone call from him today and yesterday evening and they were back in general population. So the lockdown had finished. There was no, okay. he had already done 10 or 12 days of that. Uh, so that that had finished. So he, he was totally perplexed this evening how they could use this excuse. Uh, totally bamboozled. Um, and they had, and as he explained to me, at the end of every landing, in Mount Joy, there is a room where you can go in and, and, and do your video call or your video conference, you know. So even if they were in a lockdown, they could have facilitated that because it just means bringing one person out of the cell and bringing them down to this video room, you know. So he, he's extremely annoyed again that he's not getting a chance to, to put the questions he wants to put uh, out there, you know, and he, he feels that he was just shut down today. Um, you know, today, he, he, I'm not saying he was looking forward to today, but he felt today maybe was a chance to, to, to get his point across. And, and they've taken that away from him now again until the 18th of February. You know, and, and I know there's people out there and they're saying, well, why doesn't he purge his contempt and, and come out? You know, if he, if he purges his contempt and comes out, it defeats everything he's trying to do. He wants to ask these questions in the court and he wants to get answers, you know. Well, but he hasn't um, been facilitated in any which way whatsoever, you know, and I, I believe it was said too today in the court that there was paperwork lodged, but it wasn't lodged by a solicitor, so it didn't really count. No, 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 that wasn't said in court, that it wasn't lodged by a solicitor. No. No, 
No, I was present in the court. That wasn't said. It was it was said that the um, that Anthony had lodged paperwork in court. Now, um, again, Donal, um, we have to be very careful here. We cannot stray too far because um, I I want to you know to uphold uh, the court and and, and the protocols. Yeah, I, the court. I, 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 I yeah. won't I won't stray too far. All I'm relaying back to you is how Anthony is feeling this evening and what he said to me. Okay. These are these are Anthony's words, and he's he's very very angry. You know, David and Geraldine are very very angry this evening. Um, you know, because once again he's been he's been it's been closed down. You know, they're they're worried about a pandemic, and 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 they're saying because of this pandemic they couldn't do this that and the other. They weren't too worried in the middle of a pandemic that threw these three three people out on the side of the road. They've Anthony locked up since. So you know. That doesn't cut any mustard with me, their, 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 their worries or concern about a pandemic. It's all nonsense. It's nonsense what they're saying. And, okay, and um, it just gets more well, and more that's, frustrating. That's, 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 I, I suppose that is your opinion, Donal. Um, and, um, you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion. And that is your belief. Um, I suppose... Um, if we could um, now, I suppose, bring this into general terms and to move it away from the um, from from the McGanns, um, and I, I suppose this is a question that I will put to both of you. I'm now going to speak in general terms. We have been told that um, there is actually a tsunami of evictions coming down the line. So, um, Colm, um, if I could put this question to you first. Um, moving away uh, completely now from this case and just to speak in general terms, uh, for those people who, uh, and the many, many people that are now facing eviction in 2021, um, what would you have to say to them? You've, yeah, you've, well, been, you, you've, been, you've been on the journey and you've been to jail and you've been out of jail and uh, you, you, you've kind of, um, I suppose, um, you know, uh, paid a huge personal price for, for 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 getting involved. So, what would you have to say to people that are facing eviction? Yeah, well, can I answer? I'll I'll answer that now in just in one second. But just to to clear up in case that the viewers it have any um, bit of of unanswered questions about the. The, or the thing that was said in the court, that was on the video link that we were, what Donald was saying there, that was on the video link that we were on from Mong Choi Prison. And um, just to update on the situation there, I know I was in it, I was on it, and the morning... Okay, okay, so just hang on a second. So what you're trying to describe to me now is that you have actually... Um, been in court via video link from Mount Joy Prison. So this is what you're about to describe to me, your experience yes, of yes. it. Yes, and, okay. And I witnessed what Donald was referring to there about uh, um, the, the counsel for my learner no, colleague. Is, please, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. just tell me, please, uh, um, what are, is the procedure in Mount Joy Prison? The, the when, you is when you have... Yeah? Court. The court staff comes around to the cell. Well, that's what they've done to me when I was in lockdown, when I was in solitary, yes. and says that you have um, a video link <coughs> after lunch. So okay. we, that was at two o'clock and about 10 to two, they came to the cell door and I met up with Anthony and Kevin on the way down. The three of us was brought down to the, the room and we were kept there's a room before you go into the video link room and two yes. kept in there and we were put in one at a time that was the no. situation it was the prison service that notified us that we were up and that's i think what donald was trying to to say what? The, the okay link. okay and yeah. um were you in solitary confinement at that time or yeah. had you you were actually in solitary confinement yes. at that time yeah yeah. Um, and so they took you out of solitary confinement and brought you down to the room, okay, yeah. for, for the video link to the court. The three okay. of you together, yeah. The three of you together, yeah. okay. So that's what you remember. 
Okay, so getting back now to the question column of um, what you would have to say to people that are facing eviction, people that know that, that, that they're facing eviction in 2021. Well, all I can say is, and just to say it, that in the past week, I have spoke to, well, 11 people that's in serious difficulty. But would you believe it? Nine of them are farmers with land and with vulture funds. So I just say to people, will you waken up and smell the coffee? That's, you know, they have to get real and they have to stop listening to what the, the, the bull that they're being fed every day of the week through newspapers and television. Reality. They have believed and a lot of these people has done everything by the book all the days of their life. And now they're at the stage where there's neighbours telling them that their farm is up for sale on this website or the other website. This this is just the start. Wait till this pandemic or so-called lifts and they'll see where they are. Because I, I know people in businesses and that has been closed down and they still have to pay and they were only struggling to survive as the war. So can you imagine what they're going to be after two years of no income and all <clears> the bills <throat> mounting up? Like, they know it, and there's people scratching their heads, and they're too embarrassed. Pride is what has destroyed this country. Absolute pride, and afraid until the last minute, until there's someone ready to commit suicide, or someone in the neighbours is going to find out. Like, I could tell you, the amount of people in this county alone, in Mayo, that has given their houses over to the banks and has rented them back off them, just for pride. Nothing else, just for pride. They don't want to be seen to, to be at the bottom end of, of the, the race, or whatever you want to call it. They want to be up with the Joneses. This is the way society is today. Instead of the only way to deal with anything is to be open, honest, and willing to do something about it. Okay. That's my opinion. And these people that's going around and think that they're getting a deal by staying in their houses and signing them over to the banks and the corporations getting the county councils getting involved, like one five minutes in the doll, it'll change the legislation on that when the banks are ready and it'll be that they'll be moved from their house because there's a bigger family looking for a council house. This is my opinion, what's going to happen. I know, and I have a feeling, and I'm preaching it for the last, since this pandemic came in, is that this is all it's about, is owning. Like, how is it that the whole world is in debt to the banks? Who are the banks? Where are they getting all their money? They charge you for using your money, for using my own money. And the other thing that people with both businesses and family homes, they know that when you take out a mortgage, you have to take out insurance. And if the banks are giving out the people that has deposits with them, if they're giving out their money, the banks has to insure that because it's not the bank's money. So when the, the, the repossession is lodged in a court, that's proof to the banks and to the insurance companies that the people cannot pay or didn't pay. So the insurance can be claimed on it for the banks. Then they sell it on to a vulture fund to make it as, as if they are completely washed their hands of it. But we have, and I have identified where for certain banks, the vulture <coughs> funds that they transfer it to, the same people are on the boards of the vulture funds as were on the banks. So look, at it's time for people. Don't believe what I'm saying. Check it out for yourselves. Go in and do the research. It's there to be got and it can be got. And the, the thing about it is people are waiting for someone to come along and to do it for them. Them days are over. There's too many people involved and you okay. need to get okay. up yourself because come December this year, it's, it's going to be a frightening place to be, this country. That's my opinion, and I, okay. there's nothing happening in the courts to make me believe any different. 
Okay. Oh, um, very chastening words, Colin. Very chastening words. Donald, I'm going to leave the final word to you. Yeah, thanks, Anna. And I, I, I'd just like to go back to, to uh, Anthony and Kevin. And um, I just ask people out there to keep keep, keep the two, two men in their thoughts. They're, they're not doing this because they want to, you know. Um, I suppose everybody knows why, why Anthony is there. And, and, and Kevin is there because he truly believes something rotten is happening here as well. And not alone happening to the McGanns, but happening happening all over the country, do you know what I mean? As Colm spoke about there, you know. Um, and all you have to do is, is, you know, Kevin Taylor had a 30-year unblemished record in Garda Siakana, you know. Uh, yes. He's a retired guard. And he, 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 he sees what's wrong, and, 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 and he's standing by his, his, his principles here, and he's trying to highlight this fraud and corruption that's going on between the banks and the court system. And it's the ordinary people every time that are getting hammered. It's the likes of me and you, uh, the ordinary, ordinary person that's getting hammered. And I've spoken about it here. The ordinary person is priced out of everything in this country at the minute. And he's especially priced out of getting justice in the courts in Ireland. You know, and, and you know, I take my hat off to Callum. I take my hat off to Anthony, but I especially take my hat off to, off to Kevin Taylor. I think he's a remarkable, remarkable man for what he's doing. And I, you know, I, I'd ask people to, to remember that, you know, and think about that and ask the question, you know, start start asking the questions. You know, I, I first became aware of this uh, two years ago uh, when the McGanns were, were illegally evicted from their house the first time. You know, and I was very naive. I didn't realize the, 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 the level of skullduggery that was going on in this country. Um, now, I, I, you know, can I, can, Donald, can I just... Um, put you back on something and I, I have to say this you, you said that they were illegally um, illegally uh, evicted now yes um, so that is your opinion but uh, well, that is my that, yeah that is that, that, is, my that, that, that is your opinion yeah. that no is more than they're being illegally it's, it's, no more than but, no more than Kevin and Anthony are been illegally detained in Mountjoy prison but, but, tonight but, and have been for the last eight but, weeks but 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 Donald that is your opinion because the it's, it's my opinion and it's the opinion of more people they are being illegally detained in Mount Joy prison Donald, and the hands have been illegally please, evicted from Donald, their house. Donald, 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 please. We cannot, we cannot say that. We are not allowed to say that. Uh, and, uh, That's my I suppose personal I, opinion, Anna. I'm not, that, uh, this that is, is your personal, personal that is, opinion. That is your personal opinion. That is your I, I, personal I, I, opinion. And I have seen, I have, I, I, Donald, I, I'm not just making this up off the top of my head. I have seen what Donald, was going on. I have seen what Donald, has been going on. Donald, can we just now please leave it? Um, I, I can see that you are... Um, well, Anna, very, I, I am. I'm very annoyed you're, because I speak you're, you're to a very, good friend very of mine every day and, uh, from Mount Joy Prison. It's very, okay. it's very, very distressing. Okay. You know, and I, and I, I you know, I'm sorry, Donald, I don't mean to cause you, but it is very, Donald, very distressing. I, can I, Donald, can I advise you that we're going out live? Okay. Yes. Uh, and we, you know, we went out live so that it would be authentic. That it wasn't going to be because we know that uh, uh, in, in mainstream media. That um, it goes, that it, it it's pre-recorded, and so everything can be taken out of it. That would leave uh, the um, the radio station or whatever open to defamation or libel or to any kind of charge. So, the, so but I'm t I've taken a huge risk tonight, as had Stephen, in putting this out live so that it would be authentic. So well, I, I uh, haven't but, I haven't yeah, named yeah, anyone. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 but you have, but, but you have said that. You, yes, but you. Um, I have to. I have to say. And I, counter, I, ha, I have to counter that. I have to counter that to clear my name and to clear to clear myself to say that um, that we cannot use the term uh, that it was illegal because that has not been proven in a court of law as of yet. But it is your opinion that it is illegal. But we're not saying. Uh, and we, I'm, we, glad, we, I'm glad you said uh, as of yet yeah, because yeah. this is far yeah, from all. Uh, sorry, please. Okay. So we're not we're not we're not um, we're not saying that it is we're not uh, saying that it is illegal uh, th th that 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 is a matter that has yet to be determined. Um, 
and um, the situation. So listen, I, I, I just want to kind of uh, bring it now to a close and I just want to thank both of you. It's late. Uh, uh, it's both. very important. I wonder, could I just no, say it? It's no, not I, I think... on anyone or anything. It's just yes. saying that uh, the McGann property is secured by KBC Bank. That's, yes. that's what I'm saying now. But if there was any thought even that they had possession, now, we please, wouldn't be done can, for contempt of court, we'd be done for trespass. That's okay. all I have to say. Yeah, okay. That's it. Thanks very much. And and that's that's your belief, Colm. Um so we have to um what shall I say, we have to be extremely careful. I want I I know that it is um it's a very emotional issue. Um, you know, it, 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 we're all very, very close to Kevin and, 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 and to Anthony and, and, and particularly Donald. He's in daily contact with them um, and, and um, huge, huge support to them. It has been a huge support to the McGann family. So um, it's understandable that uh, Donald um, feels very, very angry about what is actually happening. That is, it, that, that is to be expected. Um, and for you, Colm, um, you have um, done your time and you are um, out now. And instead of sitting by the fire, smoking your pipe, you're actually reaching out to people that are, are actually facing eviction from their farms and, for, and, for, and from their homes. So um, I applaud you for that. And as Arnold Schwarzenegger once says, and to the people that has me here, that put me where I am, I'll be back. Remember okay. That? Yes. <laughs> nice. Okay. So to, to 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 both of you, I want to thank you, and um, I I want to thank Stephen who has made this live stream possible. And I suppose um, I want to finish off by saying that um, I have facilitated this uh, live stream um, because I feel that it is very very authentic, and um, I I suppose that. Um, that uh, the officers of the court and the, the the judges in all of this case believe that they have um, they, they believe that they have upheld this to the letter of the law, um, and uh, th and that is their belief. Um, so it, it's it's I suppose um, a very very sad situation that we're facing into 2021. As Colin has said, so many businesses. Um, so many people are going out of business um, and so many farmers uh, struggling uh, to, 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 with, with the debt that they have to the banks. So um, th this case in Strokestown is not an isolated case. It's not a unique case. Um, it is uh, something that is going to be facing quite a number of Irish people in 2021. And I did write a letter which was published in the Farmers Journal in 2016, in which I uh, said that Ireland was about to witness uh, a takeover of property uh, not seen since the days of Cromwell. And um, unfortunately, um, it, it's, it's beginning to look that way, that so many people are going to lose their homes, so many people are going to lose their farms and businesses. And I suppose um, uh, these men believe that, um, that that they are standing up to this um, and, 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 and trying to hold the line, as it were, on this issue. So thank you so much for watching. And um, we will be back again live next Wednesday night at nine o'clock on Centre Ground. Iwa.